everybody, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. Just got off camera with Peg Robinson and we filmed a video today at 9, from 9 to 10.30. And I kind of cleaned up my desk, but I had a thought that when I did my pulls with the wet strength tissue paper, a lot of it was just color. So I decided to salvage <laughs> my dignity and my pride by doing something with these. I don't know exactly what I'm going to stamp, but I have so many handmade stamps that I feel like I need to do something with them. So I've taken some stuff out. I cleaned this one off from when we when I stamped. Oh, where are they? I had some prints that turned out okay. Not great, but okay. Uh, let's see. These two. Did this just... I put color on the jelly plate took the imprint from this and then stamped it on there. So these are not what I was really expecting because when I did the pull on this one, the black from a previous thing I did, this is a fat Posca, I think that's a Posca pen, left an ugly black print on there that I really wasn't wanting, but you know, it's there. And then there's this one where the paint didn't, didn't exactly stick very well on everything. So I'm going to redeem this. So that's what this video is about, is <laughs> redemption of my pride. <laughs> uh, let me start with this. Uh, let's see, I need to put some other color underneath it so you can actually see. Well, will it work this way? I wonder if it'll work this way. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. So, um, Safia, I think her last name is Button, um, told me about a pin that I have kind of, I kind of like it. It's a Pilot G-Tech C4, and it has a very fine needle sharp tip on it. So I think how I'm gonna redeem my prints is I'm just gonna go around the stuff here. Oh, that's nice. It's right, right, very nicely on the tissue paper. Now this is not the kind of tissue paper that you can buy at Dollar Tree, just saying. I ordered this from Amazon and then I got told after I got it, it probably wasn't the best tissue paper and I really don't care. I mean, it just, see there's the lines. Um, it, it works fine for what I'm doing, which is basically nothing. <laughs> I'm just playing around with it. Um, Experimenting, I shouldn't say playing. I'm experimenting with the paper and the paint and my poles to see will the paper hold up. And yes, it does. I used a lot of wet on one of them. And what happened is it came right through the tissue paper. So I had to blot it up with, um, I used a, a napkin and then I used a white computer paper, a piece of computer paper on it. And still the tissue paper was pretty wet. I oversaturated it. So I learned that it'll take certain kinds of water, I mean not certain kinds of water, certain a certain amount of moisture and then after that it just kind of pops through the other side. It's just too wet for the tissue to absorb. But that's fine. I learned what this is capable of doing and that actually that kind of makes me happy. I learned something. So I thought I would come on and finish this uh, wet strength tissue paper and putsy around with it and see what happens to it, what I can do to it. I might try to brush in some of the color in here. I could doodle on the leaves. Um, this pen doesn't bleed through to the other side. I'm afraid some of the other pens that I use that are a little more juicy and have a more medium point on them might cause this to bleed through. I'm not really sure how this is going to turn out. Let me do one with a different kind of pen, my favorite pen. I know the pen that I use is this Uniball Air. It's got a, a medium point on it. I'm not sure how this is going to take it. Oh. That's nice. I'm going to look on the other side, see if it... 
I don't think it'll soak through. But sometimes if you use a more cotton or rag-based paper, this tends to feather out on the edges so the lines are not nice and crisp. But this is tissue paper and there's just hardly anything in it. Yeah, it did just fine on the other side. Okay, so I can use this and, and rest assured that it's not going to bleed through to the other side. Like if I was scared, I wouldn't leave this underneath it. So that was, that was worth it. Learn something new every day. Um, let's see, I did these, these, I gotta do these. Uh, so I'm just gonna outline these and then I'm gonna let it dry because I have a feeling because it, it sits on top of the paper that it's going to be like um, Yupo paper. You've When you use certain types of pens or paints on it, it takes a while for it to dry because it's basically plastic. Um, this isn't plastic, but I think it'll take a long time for this to kind of dry. So I'll move on to something else and learn that I can use this and it'll still give me nice black lines that don't bleed through, which makes me very happy. Alrighty, I got a couple more of these to do. And then I, I sorted out my piles to what was I considered to be really, for me, I consider it to be ugly. I wasn't looking for a lot of composition I, I chose poorly on my colors. Um, I threw Stabilo, uh, the woody Stabilos at it and dipped them in my dirty paint water and that's how I saturated the paper for that, which was oversaturation. The paper had a hard time taking that kind of moisture. So I got carried away there. Um, and I printed over this tissue paper that had oily spots on them. I did the oil mamagami and it bled into the paper. I set something on it not thinking that it was greasy enough to go through and it soaked through about 15 or 20 sheets so I cut the sheets in half and I kept the oily parts to play with so that I don't waste the good paper. This is stuff I might have thrown in the trash because it had the oil spots on it but I jelly printed on it and it went fine. I don't know where I will use this paper. That's not the point. It'll just, you know, I'm just glad I, I could salvage the paper. Oh, one more. It's hard to see through that. See, this is the oily spot right here. So I'm not sure how this is going. Well, it's right over it. Isn't that something? I'm just doing it loosely. Not anything artistic here, just outlining it. There you go. So that's the one and right there is where the oily spot is and boy you can sure see it. Okay, so there's that one. This I've decided that I'm going to stamp with a blank stays on pad. I wonder if I should use green. Hmm. Maybe I should use this. This is Memento. This is bamboo. Bamboo leaves. Okay, so I need to clean this off. Because I'm not going to use the black and it's going to leave a weird whoops, going to leave a weird print. This is this one. This is the bamboo. So let's try the bamboo green on green. Let's see how it does. Oh, nice. Okay, let me take all this other paper out from under here. Can you see it still? Well, there. Wait, let me do this. Oh. <laughs> I thought I had white paper here. I have something that I tested my uh, printer with, so that's the printout from testing the cartridge. That, maybe that makes it easier. Yeah, that makes it easier for you to see. So I'm just going to stamp these randomly because I don't want them to. I don't want there to be an up or a down. So I just want it to be a scattered pattern. And I still want to print off because when I cut it, it'll look like, you know, I went beyond the edge. It'll look good that way. I 
I put this mat on here to stop the glare, but all I do is spend time readjusting it because it scoots. I might have to rethink this. The stamp was carved in uh, December when we did the carved December when I did it. I made it through every one of the days of the month and it shocked me because I really thought I'd give up sooner than what I did. I actually finished it, which I find very shocking. My word for this year is finish. And I started a doodle book and finished it. I've finished two this year so far. And I'm working on a third one. So I am really trying to, to keep my word about finishing things. It's kind of hard. I want to knit. I want to make books. I have my Artemat stuff to, to make. And, you know, there's just not enough hours in the day because eventually I have to do laundry and cook. Oh, yeah, and run that vacuum cleaner thing. <laughs> I think my Roomba is a senior citizen now. I've had it four years, and I think it doesn't like us anymore. It's not doing as well as it used to. So we may have to... Um, we, we might have to buy ourselves a new one. For a little house and three pets, it works really hard. A long-haired cat, two short-haired dogs, and my hair's long. So... I'm always having to clean my hair out of the Roomba so the little spinner stuff will work. Because of my hair. It gets tangled up in things. You don't realize how much hair you've lost until you look at the bottom of the Roomba. <laughs> I could, if I saved all the hair from when I started growing it out um, to now, I probably have enough to do a wig just from the leftover hair from the Roomba. <laughs> oh, look. It did go through. Look at that. Oh, mercy. Good. Ooh-wee. Okay. It went through. I thought the paint would stop it. No, sir. It did not. Look at that. It did bleed through because that wasn't there before. All right. So now we have to wait for both sides to dry. I have my... Oh, I put my clothesline away. I sort of say I can hang this on my clothesline. I'll have to get it out and let it turn on the ceiling fan and let it blow it dry so that um, it gets the air circulation and will dry the stuff off. There we go. Let's turn this one this way so it looks a little random, which it is not. <laughs> only, appear, only the appearance of, appearance of random. And then we'll do a peekaboo here. And I have to be sure not to set this on anything since I see now it's bled through the other side. So there's this piece. So I redeemed my print. <laughs> Let me just set this aside over here so nothing happens to it. And then we can put away, are we gonna put away the green? Yes, we are. We need to try some other color. All right, so this one was, I tried to do the green leaf there and it didn't, oh. Didn't go well. Um, I got another leaf here. I think I may use black on this one because... I don't know, black and yellow? Seems so Halloween-y, right? Mm. Well, if I'm going to make it Halloween-y, I'm going to use my cat I carved. So I'll have a black cat. How's that? Whoops. Let go. Let go. Okay. So now we're going to have Halloweeny paper. My little black cat. It's one of the easiest things I made during Carve December. Or is it December Carve? I can never remember which way it is. There he is. This pad is very sticky. Might be the stamp, I'm not really sure. I'm gonna blame it on the stamp. There we go, that's a better print. What do you think?
All right, so I'm going to stamp this whole thing. This is kind of a, this is not yellow ochre, it's some kind of gold. This is um, Art Deco paint that's I've had since 2018, and I'm I've got a container full of them that I need to use, so the next video that I film might be me dyeing paper with the watered down acrylic paint because it needs to go. Some of it's very clumpy, some of it's starting to separate. I haven't smelled any of it yet. I'm, you know, when paint goes rancid, it's like smelling oil, cooking oil that goes rancid. You definitely know it's no good. One sniff, you're like, nope. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with these papers. They will probably go as a background or something like that for collages, which I haven't made in a while. I've kind of gotten away from doing it because I'm so into the Artemat stuff and into making books that I've forgotten how to collage anymore. I see a lot of people that do some beautiful collages on Instagram that they inspire me and then I'm like, you know what, that's so not going to happen today. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to go to a plant sale and I'm very excited about new plants for my yard. Let's see, I got this down good. It's a little sticky. I don't, I'm blaming it on the stamp, but I'm not sure if it's the paint or if it's really the stamp. I'm not really sure. Okay, let me see. Oh, uh, you know, okay. So this is the paint side. And it has basically sealed the paper because I don't see a lot of cats or black on here from where it's bled through to the other side. So if I'm going to rubber stamp stuff and don't want it to bleed through, then I need to rubber stamp on the side that I jelly printed on. My dog is barking outside the window where the art room is. I'm going to link the video that Peg and I did the live for this morning down below in the description box for this video. So if you want to see <laughs> my adventures of jelly printing, it'll be in the video. And then Peg makes some really nice things with Tyvek where she melts it into shapes. She made a, a couple beads for a, for a gathering she's doing this weekend. Um, so there'll be all kinds of stuff. The video is an hour and a half long. This video won't be an hour and a half long. <laughs> I don't have it in me and there's not enough coffee in me today to go that long. I'm going to clean up my studio and I'm going to sit down and cast on a new pair of socks. Because the old, well, actually what I'm going to do first is close the toe on the original pair I started back in the middle of March. And then I'm going to start a new pair for Becky McCauley. I've never, um, I've never knit socks specifically for somebody who doesn't wear the same size shoe as me. Or whose legs aren't as fat as mine are. <laughs> so... I told her she's going to be a guinea pig. Now, I've given away other socks for to people whose legs are a little skinny, so I did try to tighten it up a little bit. Um, I just changed the needle size that I was using. So I want to finish one pair before I start the other because this gets you into all kinds of problems. When you don't finish stuff, you start. I'm trying to make this year the year of the finish. So here's my 
black cat yellow gold. I think like a golden yellow. I have the bottle, but it's across the room, and I'm not going to get up and go get it. But it is Art Deco paint. Deco art. Deco art. Art Deco? Deco art. I don't know. You know. You know what I mean? Okay. Thank goodness I'm wearing an apron today. I'm looking around for other stamps. I might have to find me some other stamps to stamp on this. So, because this is non-directional paper, you can use it and not worry about whether the cat is right side up, upside down. It makes no difference. So, there's my kitty paper. And if you look, it's mostly green paint from the other stuff that bled through. I see a couple little teeny places where there's some black, but not. it didn't bleed through too badly. Oh, it might have been from this right here. I don't know. Well, it's not coming off on my hand, so... I don't know, but it didn't bleed through like the green did. So there's the black cat that I stamped, carved, on the paper. Alright, so I'm going to stamp some more, and what I will do is I will watch TV, and I will fast-forward you through the stamping and give you samples of what I do with the rest of the paper. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this one because there's a lot of moving parts to it. This is my throw-together flower pot thing. So I can't remember how many years ago I carved this, but I carved a flower pot so that I could mix and match what I put in it. So I'm going to stamp flower pots in the corner of these little green splotches of color and make them go all different directions. Let's see, let's do this one this way. All right, so I'm going to show you three. So the first one is this one. And it goes in the pot like this. 
ordinarily I would do two colors, but not today. So here's what it looks like when it's stamped. All right, you see the big gap in there? I was prepared for the gap and I have a smaller stamp to put in the gap to fill it in. So there's that one. Then we have this one that has a stem on it. And I'll put it down in the pot. Scoop this up so you can see better. There's that one. And it does have little leaves on it, but that wasn't enough. So then I have a larger leaf here. I'm going to stamp that on there. And we're going to give this plant some bigger leaves at the bottom. And turn the leaf around. And then we're going to stamp that here. And I don't think there's quite enough bushiness at the top. So I'm going to take this one and just put another one right here. Whoop, it's slipped. So now this is filled in. And there's that one. Then I have this one. I did one pot and about three or four different arrangements of what I'd want in the pot. So here's this. There's this one. Sorry, it's kind of hard wrangling this paper. There's that one. And I, I like the leaves on it, so I'm going to add more. Hopefully this time it won't slide out of my hand. There's another one, and then I'm going to turn it this way, and then we're going to do this one this way. So, there's more leaves in that one to give it a little more depth. So those are my combos. So here's my pot. Wait, let me do it this way. Here's my pot. Here's this one. Then this one. And this one. And then here are the two little leaves that I have to supplement with. So I'm gonna finish stamping these in the little little squares that I did where I did the distress ink, just putting the pad on the paper. I'm gonna finish stamping these and I'll show you at the end of the video. It's getting kind of long now and my coffee's wearing off. So this might be the end of the video. Let's see, do I have any other flowery things to add to them? No, I don't. So. That'll be it for this arrangement here, and then I'll finish it up and come back. Okay, I promised I would come back at the end and show you what I did. Now this is the one that's my roll-off paper. I'm not doing anything to this. I just like it the way it is. All right, so let's start with this, this one. This is the one that all I did was uh, I stamped off on something else. Whoops, let's do it. Nope, not that way. <laughs> well, anyway, this is just the stamped and I went over it with a black pen, the outsides. I'm trying to find a piece of white paper that's not mucked up on one side so that, okay, here we go. 
All right, let me put this underneath here. There you go, so you can see that better. Oh, well, kind of better. Oh, this one needs to be good. Oh, I need to do this one again. Some of these don't have a whole lot of paint in them. So I'm thinking that I might take a little bit of paint to kind of touch up the ones that are empty and that, that are kind of empty, that don't have a lot of paint in them. So that's all I did to these is just kind of squiggle around all the um, fronds or whatever you call them. So that's the first one. Oops. All right, the next one is the one where I just stamped the, um, oh, what do you call it? The, <laughs> what is this stuff called? Distrex oxide. Distrex, distress oxide down. It just plunked down the pad. So then I took the um, stamps that I had carved from Carved December and I decided that they needed some way to accentuate the pots, the flowers in the pot. So all I did was I took this pen and just did around where the paint was to make, make it its own little picture. So if I ever need a picture inserted as a background, what I can do is just cut around each one of these little squares and save them for putting down where you can't on, on a piece of paper and then it'll kind of blend into the background. So there's that one. This one I'm not as quite happy with the results. I wanted print and it didn't, I don't think it went very well. I have this giant block that I like to use that has the alphabet on it. So I stamped it, but I had to stamp it on the same side where I painted. And it didn't, I don't know, just didn't, didn't go the way that I was going to. I still will use it though. The next one is a Simic writing over just the pea green kind of paint. And this could be torn off in pieces or you can use this for a whole page and then put another piece of this tissue paper on top of it and then put other stuff in the foreground. This one, I did the same thing as I did to the other one, except for I used a darker pen. I think I, this is a Posca pen around each one of these to make them darker. Look like giant bugs. <laughs> All right, so what I decided is I'm not doing anything to these guys here. I'm going to leave them the way they are. I like them. This one I'm not changing. This is just the white and green kind of roll off and it has, you can sort of see where the stamp is. It didn't, it didn't show up very well, but I can see it better in person. I'm not doing anything to this one that has the black mark on it. I'm going to leave it the way it is. It can be used for a background paper. I stamped kitties all over this one because I really like the way the kitties look. Then this was a tryout for the other one that I did. But there's no squares on this one. It was just a giant roll paper, uh, giant pull. And I decided to try these on it. And that's what, that's how I got the other one that I wanted to do. The other one with the squares on it. That's how I ended up with this piece. So see, not every piece is meant to be a show piece. This this here led to this. So, you know, not every piece is going to be wonderful, but it was fun. And I played around with my stuff. Now, I did not use this one. I did not use this one in the in the um, other one because it was too tall for the squares. But I do like this, and I ever want stuff for the background, all I, can, all I have to do is just cut these out. I love this one. And that is one solid piece. It's not one you piece together like the rest of these guys. And then I finish this one by stamping this. It's just a school eraser from Dollar Tree. And I just stamped continuously. I turned it different direction every time. And this can be used as a background with something big and bold in the front of it. So the rest of these I set aside that I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with them. These are just jelly prints. This one I'm not crazy about. I may just print over it. The same to go for this piece of paper. 
I don't know what to do with this one. This one will be gone over with more jelly because it's too dark. I just, I don't like how dark it is. I could do white on it with a Posca pen. That's a possibility. This again also is too dark. And this one's just not usually my taste, but it has possibilities. That's the thing with doing all these pulls is everything has a possibility to have more done to it. Or you just start over. All right, so that's everything I think that I did yesterday. Oh wait, there's one more. This one. This red and green is not exactly an optimal color. So what I started doing this morning is what I did to the other stuff. I'm just outlining all of these in black pen and this is gonna take me a while. So I decided not to finish it. I wanted to finish the, um, the video before ugh, taking this on. I might do this while I'm listening to a book on tape because this is gonna take forever. All right, so that is everything that I did when I did the pulls. And thank you for watching. I hope you got some ideas from it. Sometimes just watching one snippet of somebody's video sparks inspiration. And I hope that I provided that for you. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.